set. I'll smooth it out. That was it. Well, we just got through test firing our new Ohio Ordnance Works 1919 A4 semi-automatic uh, Browning. This is mostly in factory configuration. It came with the tripod, pencil, and the T and E. I installed the carry handle, which is Israeli and the flash hider just because I thought they looked interesting and neat and why not. I also have the rest of the Israeli A6 kit from BMG.com. This is the very heavy duty bipod that just slips over the jacket. And this is the uh, rather hollow sheet metal-y buttstock which is just to rest across your shoulder. Just, just clamps on here. We were going to use them, but it was just too much fun to shoot off the uh, tripod. Yeah, we got about a 200 rounds we just put through it. The price of uh, 308 these days. It cycled perfectly. No problems there. The only issue we were having, and it was pretty easy to fix, and I'll go home and take it apart and fix it permanently, was the um, semi-auto uh, sear or disconnector was uh, catching a bit. If you cock it and then hold, it doesn't like to always go down all the way, see if I can get it to do. And now it's working. I think it was just a wear-in thing. But the easy solution to that is just put your thumb above the trigger and it works fine that way. But I think it's just, again, a wear-in thing because that's one of the new semi-automatic parts. The rest of this gun, except for the right side plate, is original USGI. The bolt, at least, is marked uh, Rock Island Arsenal. Other parts have drawing numbers on them. I don't remember them all. Very happy with all that being GI. This one is in 308 with an Israeli barrel just because they're trying to find and shoot. Uh, that, that even 200 rounds of 30 out 6 would be, be pretty astronomical. So 308 is the economy choice because what's the point of having one of these if you don't uh, ever shoot it? The 1919, as far as a semi automatic conversion, is interesting because it, it, even the military version, the full auto version, was a closed bolt. So what's nice about the semi-auto is they didn't have to do a whole lot of uh, changes inside. Really not much more than they had to change to make the M16 into the AR-15 or the M14 into the M1A. You know, So you're not changing the mechanical operation of the gun, how it feeds the belts and everything. So this one here has proven reliable. Others I've heard of are quite reliable. And when you get the parts kits, they have so many original parts because they only count this right side plate of the receiver as the receiver. The top, the left side, the bottom get to be all from the original kit, which is great. And um, Ohio Ordnance is known for high quality. I'd say those uh, and U.S. Ordnance are probably two of the best, you know, good reputations. The 1919 was a modification of the World War I 1917, which was a water-cooled. Both were developed by uh, John Browning. They went to the air-cooled version here with the jacket, and they used it through the 20s, 30s, of course, into World War II. The A2, the A4 came out. The A6 was the LMG version. This is set up here on the tripod. It's supposed to be a medium machine gun, but um, they tried to make it into a light machine gun with the A6 by adding the uh, bipod and carry handle in shoulder stock. Now the Israelis used retained the original heavy barrel and uh, jacket. The Americans when they went to the A6 actually went to a thinner profile barrel and a thinner jacket to save on weight a bit. But then you have to swap out many more parts unlike with the Israeli kit so that's why we stick with the Israeli. Plus most all of the American A6 kits are in 30-06 not uh, 762 NATO 308. Normally, I don't do too much with belt feds. I like infantry type guns, personal, personal type weapons. But this one is just so neat, and the price was right right now. So, yeah, why 
not? 308's available. And, uh, you know, just out there. They're a really interesting and fun weapon. It comes off the pentel and rotate it around. Pretty neat. It um, weighs about 44 pounds in this setup. As the LMG, it weighs about 32, 33 pounds. Very heavy. It even makes the BAR look light. But, uh, you know, it was supposed to be a machine gun, not a squad weapon when it was first introduced. It also comes off the pintle with the same kind of push pin system. It's kind of nice. Seems like it's a very well thought out, simplistic, dependable weapon. It's all steel, except for the wooden carry handle, which is GI style. But, um, yeah, just thought we'd share this today. Kind of a unique gun. This is the first sunny, nice day we've had in about three weeks. And it definitely performed as advertised and uh, is definitely an eye-catching gun. But uh, definitely a piece of American history that we thought we'd like to share today. Thanks for tuning in.